how many days in the month do we have thunder? You can hear thunder. So it can be either from zero up to 30 or 31 days. And so this has been measured around the world for maybe 100, 150 years. And with this data, uh, there are many places where we are seeing an increase in the number of days when we have thunderstorms. So it could be one thunderstorm or 20 thunderstorms, just still one day. So it's not a very good parameter, but there is evidence that thunderstorms have been increasing over the last, say, century. Not everywhere, but uh, globally. Oh, well, when I said it was, it's driven by the sun, basically the solar heating of the surface, which you can think of as putting a pot of water on the stove and you're turning up the heat and you start to get the bubbles boiling up. So in the atmosphere, we have air, pockets of air, which heat up like thermals and they'll rise up. And as they rise up, the water vapor there will condense as the air gets cooler and form clouds. And if it's strong enough, thunderstorms. So the sun is the trigger. And so we have some link, uh, indirect link of triggering lightning. And there've been some statistical studies showing that some solar parameters may be linked to the amount of lightning, especially in high latitudes, like in the United Kingdom, there's been one or two studies, but these are all statistical studies and we don't know the physical mechanism of how they're actually related. So the solar activity is basically the heating of the sun, which causes convection and rising motions in the atmosphere. Everything else is secondary or very minor, but it still may have some connection, the cosmic rays and particles. And we don't really see any link with the solar cycle. The regular lightning is definitely, we're seeing changes in the patterns, uh, especially the, the further we go north. So for example, in the Arctic Circle, in Northern Canada, uh, in the tundra, we're seeing lightning now, which we didn't see uh, 10 years ago in the summer months. And so we're getting fairly close even to the North Pole, we're seeing lightning. So things are moving northwards, which is a sign that the climate is changing and warming. Again, we need the heat of the sun in the summer to produce the rising air and produce the thunderstorms. And we're even seeing fires for the first time, for example, in Greenland when the, in the summer when things are melting, that the fires start there. So we're seeing a shift of the tropical storms to more intense, stronger winds, more damaging storms. And the same with thunderstorms. We may not be seeing a change in the number of the storms, but the intensity of the thunderstorms is also increasing because there's more energy in the system. And... But you know, there's conservation of energy. You can't get rid of energy. So energy goes from solar heating, heat energy, to electrical energy eventually in the lightning. So it just gets converted from the heat into uh, eventually into the lightning. And so we have more lightning in the thunderstorms. But these waves mean that on the other side of the wave, like in Alaska, the temperatures can be very warm in the winter. So they kind of balance each other out. But the overall predictions for the future is that weather will become more extreme on the both sides. So you'll have more dry weather in some areas, more, more heat waves, but you'll also have more flooding in other areas and maybe even some more intense winter storms in other regions. And things will just going to become more extreme.